Good morning everybody. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome everybody. This morning we're, start well done. we're starting a new series uh, of services looking at prayer uh, and it's great to have David join us to talk about prayer later on. Um, so let's start our worship together with a psalm. This is Psalm 59 verses 16 and 17. But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love. For you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength, and I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. You are our fortress, our shield. We ask that you be with all that we do this morning in this time of worship that we may give you praise that you are worthy of, that you pour out your spirit so that we may draw near to you. Thank you for this time that we have together. Amen. Good morning. Today's Bible reading is taken from Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. This week we've been finding fun ways to pray and exciting ways to pray. On these pieces of paper, I'd like you to write down the name of some people or a group of people and then we can pray for them using your stomp rockets. And as they shoot off into the sky, we're going to pray that they're safe or healthy. That's brilliant. And who I'm going to pray for is going to be for all of the I'm going to pray for all of the grandparents. All the grandparents, that's Excellent. Do you want to write Mom, down grandparents? Can you do a gut? Should we wrap it round? Hey, hey. With sellotape. And our favourite thing, and I might put a bit of tape just to secure it there. Right, you got it. Daddy, put mommy. This is like a normal. Mama, have I done it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Daddy, put. praying for guys? I'm praying for Auntie. I'm, I'm praying for God. God. God's love to explode Best into people's God. hearts. I'm praying for Daddy and Mummy. Lot of God. Lots okay. of God. Lots of God's love. <laughs> I did it Mum. Is it busy? One more time. Well done oh. Georgina. Oh. Help me Mummy. Please help, help Auntie Lydia to stay safe. Oh, um, God, please burst into your love oh, forever ever. <laughs> that was fun. It's perfect. You did it. Well done. Mummy, help me, Mummy. Okay. Please. 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 Please.
It's cold. It's purple! With this game, we're going to write down oh. some things to pray for and then we're going to create a static electricity charge and see if the paper sticks to the balloon. As the paper does stick to the balloon, we're going to pray that Jesus draws, <laughs> that Jesus draws everyone close to him. Nicholas, who would you like to pray for? For the people on the six. For the sick people? Yeah. Daniela, who do you want to pray for? I'd like to pray for the people in church and Georgina would like to pray for the leaders of our country. Okay, let's write that down then. Nicholas, do you want to draw maybe just a, um, a sick face? Or a sad yeah. face? Georgina, can you rub this up and down on your jumper to make it go all static -y? Lord Jesus, please draw these people close to you as the paper is drawn onto the balloon and heal them and bless them. And help them. What? Please. Mine. Oh, mine is stuck to me instead. It's stuck to the balloon. Mum, but mine is That's fine. I can't. Mine is fine. People in church. That's right. Mom, why don't we do the earth? You want to pray for the earth? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Just get for the round bit. I've, I've chosen five people: Mum, Christina, Christopher, Nikki, my Daddy, my and Grandma. My own. Okay. My best. Who are you going to pray for, Georgina? Mum. Regina's gonna pray for mummy, daddy, grandma, granddad, and Nikki. Okay. Man, what we could do, we could put it on my back. That is exactly what we're gonna do. Oh, where's the stair Oh, it's in my study. Would you? Should I go and get the Yes, please. So, you've got the earth written on yours, Nikki. So, man, on. gonna fly to the earth. What you've got, what we're going to ask is that, because Jesus is powerful, he can do anything. If he can create the heavens and the earth, he can do anything. So we can pray that with his power, he will continue, to, he will make the earth a safe place for everyone to live in. And as you pray, you can then blow into that. Give a big blow. Whoa, where did it go? <laughs> Mine is going to be a prayer, prayer sign, like a yeah, come. Thank you. is in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. The power, 
and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Hello everyone. Today we begin our new series on prayer. And what better place to start than with the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. A prayer that has been wonderfully and vividly brought alive by our young people in the video that Jim compiled for us. Yet it is a prayer with which I have an uneasy relationship. Because for most of my ministry I've been troubled by the way in which we use it in worship. Now I confess my responsibility for the fact that it is so frequently said by rote, as though on autopilot, an element of worship which we seem to rush through without the space and the pause to think about the words we are saying and their importance in our lives. Surely this most precious gift from Jesus deserves to be handled with care, with respect, for what Jesus intends it to do within us, between us and through us, and with a proper appreciation of its power and its purpose. So have we become so over-familiar with the Lord's Prayer that its lustre, its sparkle and its sheer beauty have long since been lost to us? What happens if we slow down? and try to look on it with the eyes of a newcomer as though encountering it for the first time. Well, I would expect the same sense of startled wonderment and indeed surprise as the first time that we saw these marvellous alpacas in their field beside the cinder track pathway at Ravenscar. Natives of the South American Andes, here in the UK, they are the very definition of incongruous. They stand out as being out of the ordinary, unusual and intriguing. They certainly grabbed our attention and stopped us in our tracks. The Lord's Prayer should have precisely the same effect on us, for it too is startling, surprising and shocking. It is not something to pass by quickly. Rather, it has the capacity to stop us in our tracks if we are prepared to see it as it really is. And in these lockdown times, when by now most of us, if we're honest, are struggling with the cumulative psychological effects of all the strangeness, uncertainty and disconnection, I believe we desperately need to rediscover the precious gift that Jesus puts into our hands for times just such as these. For myself, I know that over the last month or so, my mental health has been a bit bumpy, with bad days becoming more frequent. Truth to tell, I've struggled to be creative and produce video sermons, when the very process has been loaded with anxiety and self-doubt and increasingly it feels as though my ministry is beset by guilt at all that I can't be and do. Isolation has its price to pay. Perhaps you are likewise all too well aware of your own struggle to cope as the pandemic draws interminably on and normal life seems like a faded dream. So let's stop and admit that we need help. And let's turn to the Lord's Prayer. The very first thing we see, that simple word, our, is astonishing. It truly is. It frames and resets how we see ourselves and each other. It makes the most critically important statement about prayer, about God and about humanity. It is the alpaca by the theological wayside. The first word we speak says this to be true. We all belong. There are no non-persons in the family of God. 
Everyone and anyone who says the prayer is making a statement of fact. They belong. They are welcome. They are included in God's community and bound to love each other. So in our struggle, the prayer begins with that most precious affirming truth. We belong to God and God loves us unconditionally. This is the liberating truth which underpins the whole prayer. Whatever we may think and feel about ourselves, the Lord's Prayer is always an open door to God's grace. That word, our, is the first step to being well again. So the Lord's Prayer starts not with I, me, my special pleading. It opens with a startling statement of togetherness. It begins with us, we, our, as being one in God, our Father. This is the most radical statement imaginable. It undermines every them and us division and conflict. At a stroke, one simple three-letter word destroys the exclusivist underpinnings of racism and injustice. It truly changes everything for us. Our a word which in this prayer has such radical and revolutionary intensity. Our Father. Our Father, a bold statement that joins each to all in godly solidarity. Our Father, a sharp statement that calls to account and stands in judgment over tyrants, dictators and leaders who govern for some and not for all. A sharp statement that condemns racist misuse of the Bible and the cynical appropriation of faith for political ends by those who refuse to put the Lord's Prayer into practice. Our Father is Jesus' reassurance to all who are dispossessed, oppressed and forgotten. It is his reassurance and his challenge to us all. Our Father is a rallying call to pray like this, be like this, do this, together, forever. For the prayer Jesus gives to us binds us together in a global conspiracy of goodness. Through the Holy Spirit, we breathe the heart-shaped power of the Lord's Prayer into a desperate world. These words resonate and come alive. So few words, yet so much need. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, we actively become God's global conspiracy of goodness. So let's say the prayer together, with space to reflect on each phrase. Our Father, in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done.
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom. The power. And the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. So in the Lord's Prayer, we bless God and pray for our world, our communities and our lives to be shaped by God's will. We pray for daily needs to be met. We pray for forgiveness for wrongdoings, strength to resist temptation and protection from danger. In the Lord's Prayer, we dare to put God first and declare that our allegiance, first and foremost and always, is to God. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus takes six key themes of his teaching about the Kingdom of God and challenges us to make them our own. These six themes are these. The Lord's Prayer begins with the radical statement of faith and continues to unpack how our relationship with God will transform our lives. Here is faith. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Here is surrender. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Here is service, on earth as in heaven. Here is abundance. Give us today our daily bread. Here is forgiveness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Here is strength. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And some ancient texts add the climactic phrase we all know and which truly reshapes our understanding forever. It is the boldest statement of faith imaginable, brimming with hope and life and promise. It is what we need to hear right now as we struggle through the pandemic. Here is faith. For the kingdom, the 
power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer puts us in touch with this awesome reality once more. Like the alpacas by the side of the cinder track, the prayer Jesus gives us startles us to see God as the very centre of our everyday lives, right where we are, right now. And it's the prayer that requires and enables participation in God's kingdom of love by those who pray it. It is a prayer that keeps us honest. It is a prayer that helps us to live with the truth. It is a prayer that takes us as we are and loves us into a better place and space. So we need to pray our, if our faith has no room for others and their need. We need to pray in heaven, if all our interests and pursuits are in earthly things. We need to pray, hallowed be your name, if we're not striving with God's help to be holy. We need to pray, your kingdom come, if we are unwilling or resentful of having it in our lives. We need to pray, on earth as in heaven, if we are not truly ready to give ourselves to God's service here and now. We need to pray, give us today our daily bread, if we are unwilling to challenge the economic injustice that leads to poverty and hunger, or if we would withhold from our neighbours the resources that we could all share. We need to pray, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, if we continue to harbour a grudge against anyone, and fail to confront our own brokenness and sin. We need to pray, lead us not into temptation, if we deliberately choose to remain in a situation where we are likely to be tempted. We need to pray, deliver us from evil, if we are not prepared to stand against evil with our lives and our prayers. We need to pray for the kingdom, if we are unwilling to obey God in the whole of our lives, and refuse to change for the common good. We need to pray the power and the glory if we are seeking power for ourselves and our own glory first. We need to pray now and forever if we're too preoccupied with each day's affairs to be mindful of God at all. And we need to pray, Amen, so be it, if we can't honestly pray the prayer with integrity. My favourite modern paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer is this one, written by the late Jim Cotter, who was an Anglican priest in Sheffield. It takes the heart-shaped beauty of the original and with life-enhancing grace and poetry, makes it a prayer for today. It speaks gently into the experience of lockdown and enfolds us in love. I hope it's as helpful to you in your struggle as it is to me in mine. So let's say it together and savour the words as each phrase rings true. Eternal Spirit, Life Giver, Pain Bearer, Love Maker, 
source of all that is, and that shall be. Father and Mother of us all. Loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and for ever. Amen. So may the Lord's Prayer bless you every bit as much as it blesses me. God bless everyone. Thank you, David, for your message today. And those words will lead us into our prayers. Our prayers today are going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be using our strategic prayer um, guide, which has been produced so that we can focus each week on a particular area uh, in our church ministry. And this week, our focus is on disciples, discipleship and pastoral areas. And Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So, Lord, we pray as our church. We ask that you will help us to know how to reach out to others effectively. Lord, that we will help people to grow as your followers. And Lord, we also ask that you'll give us a fresh vision for our prayer ministry, for all that can be done to help others through healing and fellowship and wholeness of being, Lord, so that people can live life to the full. Help us to know how to lead people to you, Lord, so that they will know how precious they are in your eyes. Amen. And the second part of our prayer is focusing on the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to read a bit from um, the message, what it says uh, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above and so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and in forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and from evil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You are a blaze in glory. Yes. 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 
that version was from the message and I'm going to um, going to use it today to help us in our prayers. So let's pray together. We praise you, Lord. You are the creator of the universe, the king of all kings, the ruler above all rulers. We bow before you and honour your name. Set the world right. God of all hope, we call on you. We cry out to you. During this pandemic, we pray for all those who are currently ill. Lord, bring your healing. We give you thanks for those medical professionals who work tirelessly in hospitals and care homes. We ask that you will comfort those who are mourning. Embrace them, Lord, that they will experience your deep peace and great love. We pray for the family of George Floyd and the consequences and the injustices his death has highlighted. Lord, thank you that you have showed us, you've shown us how to treat people fairly and justly and with respect. The scenes on television have shocked us, watching those employed to protect acting with racial prejudice. Lord, may we all search our own hearts for any prejudice we may have against anyone regarding their colour, their faith, their class, their gender or their sexuality. Forgive us, Lord. May your justice reign and your peace flow like a river. Bring healing to the earth. May it be as beautiful as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh so we can do greater things to help those in need. Give wisdom, compassion and yearning for unity to all world leaders. You are in charge, Lord. We are safe under your wing. Help us to look out for others who need to seek refuge. Thank you for your great love for every single person, Lord. And help us to show your love to all that we meet. Help us to be kind. Help us to be practical. Help us to say the right thing and when not to say anything. Help us to stand up for any injustice. We want to be more like you, Lord Jesus. So fill us afresh, we ask. In your name. Amen. God bless you and uh, enjoy the rest of today and the rest of the week. God bless.